Let's say that you are an ancient philosopher who is building up mathematics from the ground up. And you already have a reasonable understanding of what a negative number could or should represent. And you know how to add and subtract negative numbers. But now you are faced with a conundrum. What happens when you multiply negative numbers? Either when you multiply a positive number times a negative number, or when you multiply two negative numbers. So for example, you aren't quite sure what should happen if you were to multiply, and I'm just picking two numbers where one is positive and one is negative. What would happen if you were to multiply 5 times negative 3? You're not quite sure about this just yet. You're also not quite sure about what would happen if you multiply two negative numbers. So let's say negative 2 times negative 6. This is also unclear to you. What you do know, because you are a mathematician, is however you define this, or whatever this should be, it should hopefully be consistent with all of the other uh, properties of mathematics that you already know, and preferably all of the other properties of multiplication. That would make you feel comfortable that you are getting this right. And later we can think about other ways to get the intuition for what these might be and why it actually makes sense. But to make this consistent with the rest of the mathematics that you know, you, and you go into a little bit of a thought experiment. You say, well, what should 5 times 3 plus negative 3 be? Well, you already have a philosophy of adding negative numbers or adding positive to negative numbers. You know that negative 3 is the opposite of 3. If you add 3 to negative 3, you're going to get 0. So this is going to be equal to this is going to be equal to 5 times 0. 5 times 0 based on how you already thought about adding a negative to a positive, and anything times 0 is going to be 0. So this expression right over here should be 0. But on the other hand, you say, well, I want, I want multiplying positive and negative numbers to be consistent with the distributive property. So I should be able to distribute this 5. I should be able to distribute this 5. And for math to be consistent, and math should be consistent, I should get the exact same answer. So let's distribute this 5. So if we get 5 times 3, so 5 times 3 is going, let me write it out. This is going to be 5 times 3. Right, let me write it with the multiplication, not the dot. I'll write the x sign for, mu for multiplying. 5 times 3, so I distribute it there, plus, plus 5 times negative 3. And I'll do that in yellow. 5 times negative 3. 5 times negative 3. And this whole thing we just said should be equal to 0. This should be equal to 0. Well, 5 times 3, those are two positive numbers. We know what that should be. That is going to be 15. So now we get this thing, 15 plus, plus whatever 5 times negative 3 is, plus whatever 5 times negative 3 is, needs to be equal to 0 in order to be consistent with all of the other mathematics that we know. Well, what plus 15 is going to be equal to 0? Well, the opposite of 15. In order for this to be true, in order for this to be consistent with all of the other mathematics we know, this right over here needs to be equal to negative 15. And so you say 5 times negative 3, in order to be consistent with all the other mathematics we know, needs to be equal to negative 15. And that's also consistent with the intuition of adding negative 3 repeatedly 5 times. Now, a slightly harder to conceive idea is multiplying two negatives. But we can do the exact same thought experiment. We want whatever this answer to be to be consistent with the rest of mathematics that we know. So we can say, so we could do the same thought experiment. What would negative 2 times 6 plus negative 6 be equal to? Well, 6 plus negative 6 is going to be 0. Negative 2 times 0, anything times 0, needs to be equal to 0. But then once again, we can distribute. We can distribute negative 2 times 6. So we get negative 2, negative 2 times 6 plus, plus negative 2 times negative 6. Plus negative 2 times negative 6. And once again, all of that's going to need to be equal to 0. Now based on the thought experiment we just did, we said, well, this needs to be equal to negative 12. Or we could view this as going to the 6 twice in the left direction on the number line, which would get us to negative 12. Or you could say repeatedly adding negative 2 6 times. That would also get you to negative 12. And now we also saw it over here, that we multiplied a positive times a negative. We got, to ne we, we got the negative. 
So this could be, or we know that this is going to be equal to negative 12. And so we get negative 12 plus, plus whatever this business is, whatever this business is, is going to have to be equal to 0. Is going to have to be equal to 0 in order to be consistent with all of the other mathematics that we know. And so what plus negative 12 is going to be equal to 0? Well, positive 12 plus negative 12 is going to be equal to 0. So this needs to be equal to positive 12 in order to be consistent with all of the other mathematics we know. And so there we get the idea that this is going to be positive, positive 12. I'll leave you there, and I'll see if I can make a few other videos that can also give you a conceptual understanding of why these are true.